Before we actually start this video, can I just say that this art goes way too freaking hard? Jesus Christ, Camellia, calm down. But that's right, today's video is about Camellia, and if you should summon on her banner coming up here very soon. Now, what's really cool is that the day or the day the banner like releases is the day before my birthday. So, um, I'm just saying, if y'all want to buy me some, uh, you know actual currency so I could pull her for my birthday, that'd be great. But yes, today's video is about Camellia, and if you like the content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below, and hit that notification bell to be notified of when the next Weathering Waves video comes out. And don't forget to check out Gamer Subs. Use code TYSTRA for 10% off. Guys, we got so many good things coming uh, this week, like literally on the day of my birthday, actually. Uh, we will be doing a new Shy Lily Cup drop, which she announced on Twitter, and it is gonna be so good it looks like she's gonna be in the kill bill outfit so pretty sick but let's go ahead right and let's talk about camellia's banner so first things first i want to talk about donjon now i want to give some context i'm going to be talking about my personal experiences with the character and also using pride wins tier list to kind of give some points on whether or not a character is good now again pride win is not the go-to for everything but that's why i'm also mixing my personal opinions so donjon here is a havoc dps now to me, if you're summoning on Camellia's banner, you don't need Donjon. But Donjon is still a really, really good character in case you don't win your 50-50s, right? So Donjon basically equivalent her to Hu Tao Genshin Impact. The more it, she's going to lose HP over time, does more damage, regains the HP later on, I believe, if I remember correctly. Should be... Uh, should be in her... Not active skill. Or yeah, or concerto skills. Uh, maybe not. Okay, so maybe that's the one thing that she doesn't do is gain back her HP. I thought she did. I'm almost certain that she did. I'm looking through this really quick. Yep, okay, she does restore HP. Thank God. I was, I was going crazy. I'm like, I knew I wasn't crazy. But yes, Donjin does regain her HP. Sorry for going quiet there for a second. I was, I was reading. But yes, Donjin is basically the equivalent of like Hu Tao from Genshin Impact. She loses HP while she's like doing her like Havoc damage attacks and then she gains it back. So pretty standard uh, DPS in general. I like her. I know that she's considered high up there. She's considered one of the better four, four stars. Although I think the four stars keep changing up a little bit because before uh, not well, pretty much long ago when we started uh, San Hua wasn't even up here and now she is. Same with Baiji, and she's right up there. So, Donjin is on the better, like, half in my personal opinion. I think, honestly, she could be up at tier one. I, I like using her more than Kalcharo. But, you know, it is what it is. But, I will say that if you don't pull Camellia, she's a really good substitute. So, she's going to get the thumbs up from me. Let's go ahead and move on to uh, the Resonator's uh, ex-best friend. Because we all know that Shorekeeper kind of took that spot so bye yang yang <laughs> also uh yang yang got uh disrespected by rex Lint by him wearing that costume and uh with stuff that's come out recently i wouldn't be happy about that myself uh but you know it is what it is so yang yang is okay <laughs> like like as as the tier list says right she is basically a support role and the thing with Yang Yang is her support is kind of like Venti, but like also not. And a lot of people are going to be like, why do you keep comparing them to Genshin Impact characters? It's the best way that I can understand somebody's abilities because I've played Genshin for so long. But basically her ult, when procced, basically just brings people or brings the enemies in, you know, so in that way you could do all your damage right there uh, in the middle of the actual arena. So to me, she's just okay. Like, I don't mind using her. I do kind of agree with their placement. Ugh, okay. A little bit tired. I do agree with their placement on the tier list being around tier two. Um, I wouldn't say that she's worse than Tauki personally. Uh, or I, I wouldn't say that she's better than Tauki is what I mean to say. But, you know, it is what it is. People have different opinions. Overall, Yang Yang is going to get a thumbs down from me. Uh, she's, just, she's just not that great. Now, I also is kind of uh kind of different because i actually like using a alto um i think that like he's just 
a more fun character, I guess. He's not meta. Like, God forbid he's not meta. But when I use him, like, in the times I do, it's it's still fun. He's basically a speed character. He can create an after image of himself. Uh, if he makes a little gateway, he can shoot through it and makes the bullets into uh, um, wind bullets or arrow bullets. But, yeah. He's, he's, in my opinion, he's not, like, terrible. But I don't think really any Wuwa character is terrible. I think that it's really depend on the situation. Now, granted... He's in the same uh, tier two slot on Pride Win as Yang Yang, um, and I would have to agree. And I, I think that th that's his go-to, right? This is his area. Uh, I would definitely say instead of Yang Yang being right there in the support, or even like both, I would say Tao Ki should go up there as well. But I do agree with his placement. Should you be going for him? No, like unless you want to just find a fun character, and I do think that he has the fun factor. Um, that's just personally for me. I do like his abilities. Uh, just not, he's just not crazy good. So overall, he gets a thumbs down. Like, I wouldn't be summoning on this manner for him. Now let's talk about Miss Camellia. And I had to go and find the actual abilities of hers. Because Pridewind doesn't have them. Pridewind, come on, get your stuff together. She releases this week, man. Um, but yes, let's go ahead and talk about Camellia. Uh, she's a Havoc da Damage DPS. Uh, basic attack up to four. She has a pruning attack, consume stamina to attack the target, dealing havoc damage. Pretty standard. But once we get into the abilities, it kind of changes up a little bit. Well, not kind of. It really changes up. <laughs> Crimson Blossom. After the tar or attack the target, dealing havoc damage, consider basic attack damage, then enter Blossom State. This attack can be performed in midair. In the Blossom State, you're not able to move while suspended in vines. Basic attacks... Uh, our basic attack, heavy attack, pruning are replaced by basic attack, binding vaults. Uh, chain together four consecutive attacks, dealing havoc damage considered as basic attack damage. When performing binding vaults three, hold normal attack button to cast blazing vaults that deals havoc damage bit before automatically performing binding vaults four. So when you do one, two, three, you hold the third one, you're good to go. Dodge counter is replaced by dodge counter atonement, normal attack right after the successful dodge to attack the target, dealing havoc damage, considered basic attack damage. Uh, resonance skill is replaced with resonance skill floral ravage, casting floral ravage deals havoc damage, considered basic attack damage. Uh, resonance skill floral ravage can be cast in midair. Blossom mode ends after casting resonance skill floral ravage. Uh, jump is replaced with basic attack, uh, biting rotten day. So basically you attack while jumping too. That's pretty insane. Uh, using BA... Basic attack, binding waltz, basic attack, blazing waltz, and ba basic attack, binding rond, and midair consumes stamina. Casting resonance skill, floral, ravage, and midair does not restore stamina. Consume stamina continuously to stay suspended in the vines. I think that's pretty dang cool, and that's, th that's the skill right there, right? So if we go to the forte right here, hitting a target with normal attack, basic attack, binding waltz, basic attack, blazing waltz, basic attack, uh, binding rond, or ronde, dodge counter atonement, resonance skill with god damn this is like so much i just want to yeah here we go here here's the skill itself we already know that all that stuff could really like help out uh forte circuit and uh f hereman f merrill f merrill i thought i i probably pronounced that wrong uh when concerto energy is fully recovered the inferno is not is not on cooldown Resonance skills replaced with Ephiral. Casting Ephiral consumes Concerto energy and deals havoc damage to the targets. So it's a, it's an AoE, it looks like. This damage is considered basic attack damage. Camellia enters budding state after casting Ephiral. This can be cast in midair. In the budding state, Sweet Dream increase the damage multiplier of normal attack, basic attack, binding vaults, basic attack, blazing vaults, basic attack, binding ronde, dodge counter atonement, a resonant skill, crimson blossom, and resonant skill, floral rabbit. So she increases her damage. Uh, Casket Feral consumes all Crimson Budge. Eats Crimson Budge consumed. Additionally increases the damage multiplier of Sweet Dream. When in Budding Mode, Camellia cannot get uh, Crimson Buds. When in Budding Mode, the Energy Regen multiplier of Normal Attacks, Basic Attack, blah, 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 blah. Resonance Skill is reduced. Uh, budding Mode ends when Camellia is switched off the field. Budding Mode ends when all Chris Crimson Pestles are consumed. So that's pretty neat. We have the we don't have the inherent skills yet, but what about the liberation? Okay, so basically she's just really a DPS character. I haven't really looked into her abilities that much. I only went off of what I saw on the actual trailer, and her actual animations look absolutely sick. She's hot, like we all know this. Come on now, but 
Yeah, I think that she is going to be a must summon. I'm going to go ahead and just rip the bandaid off that one. Uh, because even if you don't pull her, again, you get Donjin. And Donjin's pretty dang good. So I think that going for Camellia is a really, really good idea. Especially since, like, with the story, she's going to be, like, really, like, ingrained in our main story. So I'm really excited for her personally. So I I'm just saying again, she comes out on the 14th. So I need y'all to, you know... Slide me some currency in Withering Waves. You know, give me some of that currency so I could have a, I could have a, you know, I could have her. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm going to say go ahead and summon for her. She seems like a really, really good character in general. So that's going to be me. Or that's going to be my thing. So like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to check out my ever wonderful sponsor, Gamer Subs. Use code Tystra for 10% off. And then, of course, that's going to be it for today. Love you all to death. And as always, we'll catch you in that next video. Please take care and be safe.